And I think that's the biggest thing that I want to try to, try to instill in them is to, to not be afraid of, of experiencing things and going out and learning. Welcome to the Marvelous Moms Club podcast, where you'll be not only allowed, but encouraged to dream big dreams and imagine the very best future for yourself and your family. Throw away expectations and perfection and embrace the messy beauty of what it means to be a marvelous mom. I'm your host, Kirsten Tyrell, and I can't wait to help you discover what makes you marvelous. Everybody, welcome to this episode of the podcast. I have such an amazing guest today who I love so much, and I've looked forward to this all day long. Marianne, I'm so happy that you're here on the podcast with me. I am so happy. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Thanks, Kirsten. We're going to have fun. I think we're going to have a really enlightening conversation. And you're somebody who I just adored from the minute that I met you. And I I knew instantly, I was like, I have to share her with my people. They have to know how wonderful <laughs> Marianne is because you just truly are such a light and you're such a beautiful soul. And I have so many things that I'm excited to tell people about you. So oh. um, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'll let you start a little bit and just give some background on who you are, how many children you have kind of the stage of motherhood that you're in right now, and then we'll just dive into all the goodies that I want to talk about with you. Okay. Okay, great. Well, I'm a mother of nine. Um, actually, well, I've had uh, my f- five children, and um, and then I, I was divorced, and then um, my husband now has four, so together we have nine. And uh, so a blended family and 20 grandchildren. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's and not exciting. stopping either, right? Like you, you haven't even finished. So there's probably going to be even more. Yes. Yes. I still have uh, a couple of children that haven't had children. So i um, excited for that. Yeah. My, uh, two, two babies. So Phase uh, Derek, two Julianne. of grandmahood. <laughs> uh-huh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and I love being grandmother. It's like, oh, I get a second chance. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so it's I it's it's been um, you know, it's been a lot of fun. A lot, it, you know, a lot of. Uh, I keep thinking, well, I just needed to learn a lot. That's why I had to have so many children. <laughs> you just had too so. many things you hadn't caught on to at the first, you know, one, two, three. You just had to keep going, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, and what I love, I love all of your children, and I feel really blessed to be able to know. I don't know your stepchildren, but I do know all of your children that came from your womb, and I adore all of them. And there is so much unity within your family, and I think that's the thing that impresses me the most, is even though everybody's doing something different, there's some really strong core values, and there's some, it's like an underlying just family belief system, I guess you could call it. Like, it's... Mm -hmm. It's a really, really cool thing to see. And I, I want to know like how you did that. <laughs> I want to understand as a mom now to my little children, is that something that you can take some credit for? And do you, can you trace that back and be like, this is how we worked this out. This is how this happened. Well, what's, what's interesting, I mean, from the get-go when I was young, I really just wanted, I wanted to be a mother. I mean, mm-hmm. that was like my first and foremost goal is that I wanted to be a mother and I wanted to be a good mom. And, uh, I don't know what that meant, <laughs> you know, be good mom, but, <laughs> but just, uh, just be, uh, I think involved. And I think I'm, I've always been kind of a child at heart, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and so when I was having my children at starting at 19, um, I just had fun with them. I just, mm-hmm. and I was really fortunate that during those years, young, when they were young, that I got to be home with them and, you know, and to play with them and, um, just kind of be one of the kids actually. (laughs) So that's how um, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. That's when I met you. You're like so full of joy and so fun. And, and, you know, I think, I think that's what I've continued. Yeah. Not not, not so much myself, but my children. I think I was super blessed to have children that were, have been outgoing and fun loving. And so that, that keeps me young too at heart. So, you know, it's, um, it goes both ways, I think. Yeah. And uh, in fact, I'm I'm in Nashville right now. I <gasps> we could be doing from, this uh, live. We could you could be in my living room. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness! I okay. Well, I, can I come over? <laughs> yeah. Let's pause. <laughs> yes. Oh, you're so close. Oh, you're yeah. so close. <laughs> oh yes, I feel it. I feel you. <laughs> I feel your energy. You're so near. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, and it's I, we were just in um, we were in California with Julianne, and and then flew here uh, to be for you know, here for Thanksgiving. Tomorrow's mm-hmm. Thanksgiving. Maribeth has the turkey trot, and and we do try to um, we are we've all we're all kind of spread out, but we kind of all hold the same. Um, you know, the goal of being together. And yeah. I think we feed off of each other. Mm-hmm. We just, we just, the energy and just love to, I think we have FOMO a lot, as actually. <laughs> <laughs> we just like to be together and have fun. I think, too, it, the key, I think, it, you know, it is how, it, to have fun. Yeah. You know? Um, Who would you say has the worst case the of FOMO? Like, if you could, is it you or one of your children, would you say is the worst at, like, I have to be there oh. for this? I think it's equal uh, all the really? way around. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> we all have the FOMO. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I haven't um, known you super long or followed you on social media much, but it does seem like when I see you, you're almost all there. And I actually feel the FOMO for whoever's not. I'm like, oh, Catherine wasn't there for that. She wasn't there for Halloween. I'm so sad. Like they all need to be together. And that's yes. because to me, even you guys are just such a unit because when I met you, you were all together. Like you... I mean, mm-hmm. except for Derek. Derek wasn't there. But the, the ladies, you know, you were all, mm-hmm. you all play off of each other's strengths. And it was such a beautiful thing to see where I feel like you guys have to be all together because otherwise <laughs> you are missing mm-hmm. something, right? It's cool to see how you've built that. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, when, when we, like I said, when we get together, we do, we do feed off of each other. And, yeah. and the, 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 the neat thing about it is that that we're all the kids were all a lot alike when they uh, I was raising them. They all were in, um, you know, at singing and acting and and in fact I'd pull them out of school and we had homeschool for a little while, mm-hmm. and so that they could have the opportunity to do some of these things. And um, I I I just for me I grew up very in a in a culture that was super I was super scared, mm-hmm. and my parents were super protective and they're awesome parents. But I just didn't want my kids to be that scared of life and to go out and and, and experience things. Um, but what my dad always his phrase was, well, "I can do that." So I grew up with, "Well, I can do that." Well, I can do that, and so mm-hmm. you can do that. And so I, I kind of grew up with that attitude. But I, but I didn't want them to be afraid. And and I think that's the biggest thing that I want to try to try to instill in them is to to not be afraid of of experiencing things and going out and learning. And they've done that so well that, um, that, you know, they're swimming with whales and sharks and things that I would not do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they're, they're not afraid and that, but they, they just, they have so much life and energy yeah. in them that, um, they've give they're, they're a great example to me, but we, you know, you know, as they've gotten older and their lives and, and getting married and going out and venturing, uh, you know, out and doing their thing, um, we just love to come back together and there's some, there's like the synergy that happens when we do get together and, mm-hmm. you know, Catherine's a uh, master esthetician and Shari is a, is, you know, a master in, in her, her um, yoga and her fitness and, uh, in Mayor Bath and her inter- integration nutrition. Um, and then, and, you know, Julianne and she's starting this new Kinergy. Which is so good. Energy, All of those things um, are so thing. You know, I got to I got to take advantage of them all firsthand and they're so amazing. <laughs> and I don't mean to cut you off because I know Derek is a superstar as well and so very talented. Well, he's just one of the girls, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like my he life won't, together. It won't be complete till I've been with the girls and Derek because I've met him separately. But when I can be with you all uh-huh. together, I want to see him be one of the girls. That would be like the best. It would be complete. <laughs> He he is. He's Mr. He's comic relief. He's so yeah. funny. And I know sometimes he needs a little testosterone, you know, <laughs> so he's got his brother-in-laws, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, but the girls, they used to dress him up when he was a kid, you know, they'd, they'd dress him up as a girl and, you know. <laughs> so he's he's been around a lot of female energy for, you know, a long time and, you know, dancing on Dance with the Stars and he, I think it was good for him because he, you know, he's he was good um, with the women yeah. because he'd grown up around, you know, so many right. of the women and all of our ups and downs and <laughs> yeah. our hormones. And, and he's the baby, right? Stuff, he's so. right at the tail end? Or is Julianne no, the baby? No, actually, he's not. It's Julianne. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, she's the baby. That's cool yeah, then. I so. think it's great. So he did have the opportunity a little bit to have a little sister too. And so he really did from all sides. Yes. <laughs> he was all sides surrounded mm-hmm. by women. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. It's been fun. So it's you're telling me if I if I lean into this fun side of me and you just create that synergy from this the beginning. And I love that you said you didn't raise your children with that kind of base of fear and you really wanted them to feel like they could do anything and that's proven Mm -hmm. to be very effective. So would you say that's something that moms need to do more of is not necessarily like, go ahead, play on the top of the cliff, see what happens, but more so like what, what kind of opportunities do you feel like you help them to create where, because they do seem very fearless, all of your children, they really, they really are. And they've been able to create some amazing things in their lives because of that. So what would you what would you say are like moments that you can remember that you would facilitate that? Or or can you remember that? My mom can't remember so many things about raising us. <laughs> I'm like, how do you not remember? And now I'm already, I'm, I'm, a, I'm like, my, my oldest is nine. And I'm like, I don't remember that. That was like two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're, they're asking me a few things down. I'm like, well, let me think for a minute, just a second. But, I write that down. <laughs> oh, I, I, <laughs> I think the biggest thing was just giving them opportunities to go out and, you know, I think like to not have fear is to be able to kind of stand up and speak in front of people and, you know, that type of thing. So they were in little plays um, when they were young and um, something that I kind of figured out, I think, is that before they're the age of 10, but that was back then, I think it's getting younger now a little, is that... I wanted them to be really good at something. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like um, I said, if you're if you're going to get, you know, into, say, dance or singing, I want you to stay with it for a year. Yeah. Because uh, especially when it starts getting hard and they want to quit, it's like, no, I want you to commit for a year because until you get really good at something, you know, um, you don't know if you really like it or not. Yeah. You know? So you need to give it a year. And, um, and so um, – one like for instance, Shari. Uh, by the time she was ten, and especially in junior high, by that time she was really good at ballet. Mm-hmm. She was she was dancing and doing that type of thing. And so when the kids would make fun of her, actually for a talent show, and and she was dancing with a partner, <sighs> um, in junior high, that she 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 came home and she says, "Well, they're making fun of me. I you know I want to quit." And I'm saying, "Well." You can quit if you want to, but if you're quitting because they're making fun of you, no, you can't quit yeah. type thing. Mm-hmm. And so she so she became really competent um, and that by that time and before she was 10, so that na- then she didn't um, she didn't worry about what other the kids thought. Yeah. She loved what she did. She was uh, she was good at it and she stayed in it because she loved it and she I think really helped with the peer pressure. Yeah. And I felt that, that way with each of the kids. And even now with my grandchildren, um, you know, I've been asked, you know, what should I do, you know, by the, the my children and other, you know, other parents. And I'm saying, well, if you can get them before they're, I would say nine, you know, into something that they really love, yeah. you know, just kind of watch what they're good at. And just, I mean, one of my granddaughters, um, she was having a hard time and uh, we got her into 4-H and she loved horses. Mm. And, oh, my gosh, that helped her so much. And she'd go and she'd clean the stalls and she would do that. And she found that niche with her, uh, horses and she and, and animals. And and I think before, I mean, after the age of 10, uh, their friends are very yeah. influential. You know, and I'm not discouraging friends or anything, but I think if they can get a little stability uh, with something they really love yeah. doing, and it helps them, I think, um, anchor themselves into something for themselves and to feel good about. Maybe but, that's you know. why as a mom now I'm feeling really, and I'm trying not to go into like mom guilt or shame that I haven't done better at this, but even like we're getting, we're coming up to the holidays, right? Christmas is coming and I'm like, I don't want to give you stuff anymore. And I'm feeling this huge push to like help them to develop talents and help them to it's almost like coming off of this guilt trip of like, I've been focused on my dreams and building my business and my stuff. And it's not that I've ignored my children entirely, but before I like blinked Mm -hmm. and they went from toddlers who were dependent on me 
to people now who are growing identities and they're having interests. And I like want to, I want to facilitate those opportunities for them. My son, my middle son is like, I need to be on stage. Like it's been a while since I've been on a stage. I'm like, what? Like you've been on stage maybe three times in your life, but you know, you belong on one. And so I'm like, oh, I have to figure this out. Like I have to find a way to give him that opportunity to express himself. So like I said, I'm trying not to like Mm -hmm. stress myself out over it, but just keep it simple, but help them to find that thing. And the thing is not really that difficult, right? Like they're going to show you. And if you're paying attention in parenting, which I feel like unfortunately now Mm -hmm. with so many distractions, we're not, we're not paying attention to the gifts and the skills that they have. But I love that guidance of make them stick with it for a year because I think we're coming off of my generation. Like we're kind of maybe the one above mine. Are, have raised a bunch of children and they don't want them to be uncomfortable, right? Like they don't want them to suffer or have to deal with, uh, and I'm going off the rails here. I'm all over the place, but I feel like even that of like, well, if they don't love it, I'm not going to make them go. Right. And instead you've got to help them to mm-hmm. develop that perseverance because then once they become really good, they want to yes. stay with it. And then they have some form of this thing, like it's part of their identity now and it's something they're not going to let go because somebody makes fun of them. So I really, really love that. Yes, yes. And, you know, it takes a, a year. I mean, that's what, that, that's kind of the, what I gave them was, mm-hmm. you know, because they get so excited. It's like, oh, I want to take <laughs> piano. I want to do this. I want to do that. that. Pretty soon yeah. you really are so fragmented that you can't be everywhere, you know. And so I would be like, um, you know, pick one thing and then just stay with it because it will get hard and then they will want to quit. And it's like, no, you stay with it. And then, you know, like you and I, I mean, when you feel competent in something. Yeah. It builds confidence, and then you're like, oh, I really want to do this. And then after a year, it's like, if it's just becoming a grind and it's not their thing, yeah. it's like, okay, let's try something else, you know. But but that's that's kind of uh, I don't know. That's kind of was what I looked. Yeah. Uh, well, what I did, and but I will tell you this: that with five, and I was running m- very mm-hmm. many places. And I tried to find thing that was under one roof, you know, where it was kind of, they have, there, there's so many more things and options now, but, um, I, I tried to find, um, an art center that offered the singing and the dance and mm-hmm. everything and <laughs> like one stop shop. <laughs> Cause I would run one place and then drive an hour and go to another place. And so I, I guess what I would say to young mothers is like, you know, you also mm-hmm. need to take care of yourself because you you don't want to burn out or yeah. you don't want to kill the golden goose, you know, because yeah. you are the golden goose. You know, your mothers are just, I honor mothers and they're precious and totally yeah. no guilt trips. No, <laughs> you know, it's like be nice and, and yeah. definitely want to take care of yourselves. Um, you know, if that's at night and just your quiet time, get in the bathtub or whatever, but um, or in the morning, morning times, you know, do the morning pages and, you know, you, the meditation. I mean, there's so many, there's, we have so many resources now, yeah. um, on YouTube and things that you have access to as mothers. Uh, so do not neglect yourself I is what that. I would say for, to young mothers, yeah. you know? Well, yeah. Yeah. And as a grandma, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at right too, right now too, because I have 20 grandchildren and just absolutely adore them. I always wanted to be a mother, but I also, I, I feel like I have some, yeah. some talents that I want to share and there's some little children's books I want to write and I want to mm-hmm. do, and I want to leave a legacy. And so I'm trying to schedule out some time and space for me to do that and kind of remember and kind of, you know, give my children, um, back off a little bit and give my children yeah. uh, space for them to grow. Instead of being kind of a helicopter mom. <laughs> I thought that's so hard because it's hard now with little children, you know, because right now it's about their basic survival. Like I have to a little bit. And then the older they get, I can't imagine right. it becoming easier to step away. And I literally sometimes find myself like biting my lips so that I don't, I, I have to think like, is this really that important for you to obsess over? Are they really going to get hurt? No, they're fine. Like, and so I can't imagine it becoming that much easier as they get older because then their problems are bigger, right? Then they're like affected by other people, other grownups and the the impact becomes greater. So I'm sure that's really difficult to step back and know when to let them experience it and let them grow and learn. That that has to be like the hardest part of parenting by far is to let them live. (laughs) 
Yes, yes. Well, and I the other day someone came uh, told me, um, even to my adult children, it's like they call up and they have a problem, and it, and for instead of me jumping in, it's like, okay, well, wh what are you going to do about it? That was something mm -hmm. like how you know where you how are you going to resolve it? And it's just really interesting how many creative ways that a person can come up with if you let them. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so like maybe, you know, asking the, the child, okay, well, what can we do about it? Or what can you do about it? You know, uh, what, what uh, um, you know, can they think of? And, uh, mm -hmm. and then maybe come back and, you know, tell you. I mean, what, how old are your children? So 10, 8, and 5 and a half. So oh. they're... Adorable. Yeah. Oh, um, fun years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they really are. They're like my best friends. I'm like, I am a kid right here with you guys. Like I, I told my husband we travel with them and I'm like, he, it's like the best thing ever for me to travel with kids because I have the same attention span and I want to do the same things. I don't want to go to museums yes. all day. Just yes. like I want to swim. I want to play in the ocean. I don't want to do boring things. And so I'm like, this is actually great. They, they're my excuse. And also, like, this is so dumb. But my youngest daughter has a bladder the size of, like, a pea. And so <laughs> I <laughs> I can blame it on her. And I do, too. Like, I have to go all the time. So when I travel with her, I'm like, oh, darn, I have to take her to the bathroom again. And nobody can get mad at me. <laughs> oh, oh, that's, <laughs> that's so cute. Break. <laughs> anyway, side note. So my kids are young. <laughs> Well, and I think that, see, you're showing them respect, too. And I, I mm -hmm. don't know, I grew up with that, too, uh, with them, is that I just felt like I respected them, you know? Mm -hmm. And see, your your respect, I mean, someone didn't respect me one time when I was um, pregnant and had to go to the bathroom, and it's like, well, you can wait, type thing. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I can't. <laughs> Literally so, not possible. <laughs> no. <laughs> So, I, you know, I just, I think it's just really, like with my grandchildren, just really being present. They come in, look, in, you know, look at them when they're talking and set things down. And I think back then I didn't have to compete with, you know, the, the um, you know, Google and, the, I mean, you know, are the, the kids' phones and, in, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. And I guess what I would say as a grandma is that, you know, when we all go out to eat, it would be nice if everyone put their phone down. And we connect. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing too right now is is people feeling disconnected, and yeah. and you know it is a blessing uh, to 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 be with your kids and connect. And for those you know who everybody's out working and our moms are working, it it is a difficult juggle. It's a lot of, to juggle. Yeah. And um, yeah. so, but so when the times you are together. It's there. It's really sacred, kind of special to put your phones mm -hmm. down, be in the present, talk to each other, and and connect. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't have that interruption. I know, and I love that was kind of the premise of even when we met in Florida for the retreat. Is look at how badly we were all craving that raw connection, like how much we just yes. needed other people to put their arms around us. And I love that you guys created that space because it was something that I needed in so many ways. And mm -hmm. I think that we, but we can, I, I kind of came home with that fresh perspective of like, I can create this in my own home. My children are starving for connection and you know, it's not like they're totally deprived, but I am allowing societal norms of cell phones and devices and whatnot. And we're pretty, we're pretty unencumbered for the most part compared to maybe your average American family. Like we don't spend a lot of time on screens, mm -hmm. but I can just tell because I'm, my mind is in so many places that it is important that I look them in the eye. It's important that I am helping them to become people and not just, you know, not like pets in my house that I just have oh. to feed and keep alive. Right. I, I feel like you do shift out of, I just, I have to keep you alive to like, wow, I have to help you become a cool person, like a good person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to help mm -hmm. you be raised into a human being that's going to contribute to society. And you were touching on that before I went off the rails too, about helping them to kind of problem solve with their own stuff. And even at this young age, how do you recommend doing that? Just kind of not taking over everything and letting them work it through? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm trying to think. Yeah, um, I, I don't think I was really good at that when I think back, because I, I really kind of did jump in and, and take over mm -hmm. and do things. And so if, as I, it, what I learned from that is that 
you know, from little things like, you know, cleaning their room, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, uh, instead of in bit, I was in such a hurry that I'd go in and do things for them. Right. As far yeah. as cleaning the room and do things like that. And, um, so just, I think just delegating little jobs for them mm -hmm. uh, incrementally, a little bit at a time. And so yeah. they, you know, they don't make the bed perfectly fine, you know, just, uh, the best they can and, um, give them little things to do. Um, uh, let's see. I'm just, uh, again, I'm just trying to remember not only what I did, <laughs> what would be fun. It would be fun is to ask them actually. And, um, yeah. if some of the things that they remember, um, something that Julianne, um, was talking about is that, um, they just remember that I would always say, well, I can do that. So I think it's that it's, um, you know, watching the parent, you know, seeing yeah. what they're, they're actually doing. And then it's amazing what they really actually do learn by watching, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, right. and stuff. It's and a then good too, blend, right? Yeah. Well, and then I, I, you get, you get so busy and there's just so many things. And I think just prioritizing, um, yeah. what you should, what you can do. And, and there's, you know, um, sitting down and, and just, you know, just making a priority list. But, you know, I mean, at the time, I mean, I, my kids were my priority and, yeah. um, and, and I guess my recommendation now is that it was fun and it was wonderful, but it, for not, not as a parent to get lost themselves. Mm -hmm. And then again, yeah. you know, that connection, I don't know how many people eat dinner together now, you know, where you're just running, you know, so many lessons and running around and, you know, when the kids get to be teenagers, they have their cars, they're running, they are doing different things. And, yeah. you know, you're just trying to find time when you can be together, even if they sit on your bed. I mean, there are times when all the kids would just come in literally and, and we just sit on the bed and just sit and talk at night. Um, yeah. I, I, I just had an open door policy though, too. They were, my, my policy that. is just come in and, you know, and I was kind of their friend and still am, mm -hmm. but I, I was the only girl and with three brothers and I have all these daughters and so they're, they've become my best friends and, oh, I love that. you know, and I love that. I love that. I feel like when they're comfortable and they can talk to you and feel comfortable that as they get older, they'll come to you for the, everything. They, they won't, they won't feel like they need to hide anything because you're just open and, and mm -hmm. you can talk to them about anything. I'd rather have them to come to me than their, you know, somebody yeah. else, their friends and things. That's true. And that, but. I mean, so I wish true. I had some massive wisdom. But <laughs> oh, you do. I'm soaking it all in. And I'm sure everybody else listening is soaking it in too. And I feel like you, you've you touched on this twice now where, you know, your self-care is important too. And I did want to ask yes. you if there have been phases, you know, raising five children is not a small task, right? Like it's a huge right. undertaking. And do you feel like you did, uh, first of all, do you feel like you did lose a part of yourself? And second of all, do you feel like it was worth it? Because I think, I think we are under this idea that like, well, we have to still, we have to do both a hundred percent. And I guess in a way you can, but I don't want moms to feel like you're missing out on something better because this thing, like your kids were your world. They, it's turned out really well. Right. So I think it's, it's mm -hmm. more, so, there's small check-ins you can do. Like you mentioned the bath time. That's you, you know me, you know my soul because that's my way of self-care. <laughs> like my bath time is sacred and I wait till it is silent in the house and the kids are all the way asleep. Cause if I get interrupted with that time, like it's just, it's, it's a waste. I might as well drain the bathtub. Um, mm -hmm. so what do you feel like? Do you feel like did you, do you feel like you lost yourself a little bit? And do you feel like that's just par for the course with parenting that we have to, uh, in some ways to fully lean in and commit to motherhood? Um, you know, um, well, I'm just, I'm trying to think, I'm thinking of my, my girls now and you know, they've got so many things on their platter and they're actually working. I didn't work. Yeah. And so I could totally, you know, lean in a hundred percent. But I, yes, but I did lose myself because I had church jobs. I was trying, to, I would grind the wheat, make the bread. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I did, I mean, I was doing wheatgrass clear back then. And, you know, when wheatgrass wasn't cool and you, know, <laughs> you made it cool. So I was, 
<laughs> so I was trying to really be a perfectionist and perfect and in that and and I just think you you just need to kind of chill out and yeah. relax a little bit that your kids are going to be okay as long as you're okay. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what I'm learning right now is that when I'm okay and I'm strong and I'm taking care of myself that that actually is an example to your children. Mm-hmm. Also that look at, oh, mom's taking care of herself and she's got doing the self-care. And, um, you know, if, I, if I'm, if I have a legacy and I'm writing books or when I've done some of my paintings, uh, they love and respect that. And that just gives them an example of also how to take care of themselves and how to live also. Yeah. So you, you kind of, you do need to, it's like committing because, you know, when they're young, they they can't do a lot of things. They can't drive themselves to their their lessons, and you know they need they need help. And um, so and it does take a, a village to to raise, mm-hmm. you know, your kids. I I really do think so. It's it's finding your people, and feeling um, you know, f- feeling confident that uh, and sa- that they're safe, yeah. you know, to have other people around them, and just finding your your people. Yeah too, because it's, it's helpful to, to to say, oh, can you watch my kids for a second? Will I run here or do that? Or I'll watch your kids or, you know, find that type of a a group Mm -hmm. that can help you. Or if it's even, you know, like a church group or, or whatever that, that way. I mean, my kids, my oldest one, Shari, she helped out a lot and she, she kind of babysit and help Mm -hmm. and, and I trusted her. And, but I think too, it's just finding, finding people to, to help. And, um, but then, um, there is sacrifice, you know, involved. It, it isn't like I have these two shorties now, these puppies, I can't, you know, I can put them in their kennel and leave. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, <laughs> for a minute anyway. You know? Not for long periods of but, time, but uh, yeah, yeah. It's very different than yeah. human beings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you know, and each one, each child is uh, it's it's getting harder because I have the twenty grandchildren, but I want them to feel value. I want them um, to feel, you know, that they are important. Mm-hmm. And even if it's just a minute, if I can call and Facetime them and just say Nana loves you, you know, it's maybe you know we can't do a lot, but we can do some little yeah. thing, just a little. If it's just a minute or a, a note. I used to put notes on the kids' pillows or, um, you know, just some little thing, mm-hmm. just, you know, just, you know, simple things Yeah. in that. Um, so, yeah, but I'm, I'm bouncing around too. <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> but, stay focused, you know. <laughs> right? It's like, all there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to share. Um, but I'll, I'll keep uh-huh. you on track. So I actually want to segue too into something. I'm I'm curious if you're going to do this with your grandchildren. And I love that you've done it with each of your children. And I feel really happy that you did it for me. And that is the spirit animal, that you've identified the spirit animal for each one of your children. And you painted them for them, right? Like you, you didn't just identify, but yes. you painted their spirit animal for them. Um, you didn't paint mine yet, but I'm actually imagining someday you could just paint an otter with my face on it, like an otter, an otter <laughs> human. <laughs> you know, just imagine it. It's you can't not laugh, right? Uh, it's perfect. But <laughs> well, was, and and I never hadn't met you right. yet, and you're just so full of joy, and and that and and that's what it talks about. The otter is just you know fun, and there's this joy that comes out. And yes, you know what? That would be the legacy. That would be a great legacy. And that would make them feel yeah. special. And that and that's really why I started doing the, the spirit animals is that I wanted um, them to have these words that inspired mm-hmm. them, you know, and encouraged them when they looked at that animal and, and said, yeah, I am a value. And, um, you know, that's something that Nana, that legacy that you can leave. leave. And if you find some connection with your children, um, you know, that you can inspire them and, you know, maybe make a, you know, a little sign or a little post-it note on the door or some little, it's like an incantation, yeah. you know, that, that they can have for themselves. Well, tell everybody listening, you know, they don't know yeah. what I'm talking about with the spirit animal and what a gift this is okay. that you have okay. and kind of what you've done um, in the past and what you did even for our retreat. Was it the same process? 
Yes. Well, what I, I do is I take a, the picture and, um, well, with my own children and my grandchildren, I just, you know, I think of them. I can see them. Uh, mm -hmm. But with other people, I just get a picture and then I actually meditate and I think about it. And uh, it's like, a, like even a form of prayer where I really focus on their face, their energy. And then I come up and think of an animal that I think that they are. And then, so then I'll cool. actually go and research it. And, um, you know, and, and there, I did that with 12 of the women for the retreat. And some of the things would come up and I'd be like, oh, no, I shouldn't say that. And mm -hmm. then when I would, it, it was uh, validated. It was validated when they would say, oh, that, yeah. that is so right on. You know? It and was so weird. I think sometimes it was uncanny. <laughs> I feel, yeah, I feel kind of like channeled. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. there was an energy that just kind of went through me. And that's actually why I was in California as I was taking a, a class on forensic healing. And oh, I've also wow. do Reiki. And I think sometimes too, and that's what I would add to this as far as a, being a mother and a parent is that listen to your intuition. You know, mm -hmm. I think mothers have a, a special intuition toward their children. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, there are times when I just, I didn't feel right, or I felt uneasy, or if I didn't feel that they were safe, you know, listen to them, or listen to that feeling, you know, and I'd, you know, make a call, or find, or wonder what they were doing at the neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, That's so interesting you say that, because today I had one of those moments where I've been bothering myself all day. Am I crazy? Like, because my kids were outside riding bikes, and it turned into my son ending up at the neighbor's house to play. And we haven't lived here long enough for me to really know my neighbors. Like, it's like casually like, hey, it's nice to meet you kind of a thing. But I just it it was just this gut feeling, not that like, oh, something's bad going to happen when he's there. It was just like he's not supposed to be there. Like, it's just not what he's supposed to do today. And then I beat myself up all day about it where I'm like, am I being judgy? Like, is it do I get a bad, bad vibe? Is this just me being overprotective? But you literally saying that right now, like the fact that you said such and something that specific just tells me like, it's OK. You were supposed to listen yes. to your gut. You have yes, to. Absolutely. Yes. You have to. It's the most, it's like a superpower, a motherly superpower. And if we deny that, mm -hmm. I would hate to lose it, you know? And mm -hmm. when we don't use our gifts, then they go away. So mm -hmm. I love that you said totally. that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that, that is very important. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of reconnecting to that again, that there, we yeah. do have, um, we are entitled literally to the universe's energy. We can ask for for that help, we can, I mean, I, I believe that there are uh, angels that we can call upon. I, I, we can give a mother's blessing. I mean, we, we have a lot of power and when we, we get, we give it away to other people. And mm -hmm. I would say to young mothers, you know, um, take, take your power, believe in it, value it and listen to your gut, like you said, in your intuition. And, yeah. um, you know, even if you're a little bit off, at least that you're, you're aware I think it's mm -hmm. just being aware and an observer, you know, and kind of because we, we run through life so fast and there's, we're yeah. so busy that we kind of run through the warning signs sometimes. Yeah, you know, it's true. That are there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're very clearly there. Uh, so I love that you're going kind of down this. How long have you been on the path that you're on now? Have you always been like pretty spiritual? I just feel like you are kind of one in a million, you know, like you are probably one of the most open, <laughs> accepting, loving Aww. people that I've ever met. And have you always been that Aww. way? Or has it been like a process? Uh, um, what has been like your journey of, okay, hey, my kids are raised, what do I want to do for Marianne now? What's been the story? Well, I think I think we all have that in us. I do. I think through life, um, it gets covered by mm -hmm. um our programming and our hurts in life and things and and um i mean even as a as a as a child my mom used to say that um uh, when we would be driving i would tell my my dad you better slow down or we're going to be meet, we're going to be talking to god pretty soon <laughs> 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 you know we'd be driving and stuff and so just little things you know and and uh and then and when I was in high school, literally, God was like my best friend. I just, um, I lived out in the country and I didn't have a lot of, there again, I didn't have a lot of connection with girls or girlfriends. And mm -hmm. so, you know, God was like my best friend. And, um, and so, you know, it was, it's been a process. And then I think through life, 
I've kind of gravitated to those kind of things. And then I love being open to just good thoughts and, mm-hmm. and, uh, good principles. And, um, and then I, my goodness, like 30 some odd years ago, I was introduced to Reiki and, um, it, it's basically just channeling, you know, energy and, um, that, that we're all entitled to. I think it's just a universal yeah. thing. And then, um, and then, uh, I just gravitate to that. And so, and it's kind of, it's kind of, I also, I'm a Pisces, um, which means I kind of am pretty flowy. I'm water. I flow in and out. Sometimes I flow too much, <laughs> <laughs> too, too, too uh, flowy. <laughs> so, Can you really but I know? love people. <laughs> I, I do. I do genuinely love people and, um, yeah. you know, and that, but I've also learned that, uh, to set boundaries. It's important mm-hmm. to set boundaries because if you're so open, then it's, it's easy to, to, um, um, to get hurt, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of like building a little, little, um, barrier, not a barrier. It's, it's like, I, I, I look at it as like a, a bubble, mm-hmm. a, a nice little bubble that's, it's, you know, that's a protection that people can come in and out of, but, you know, I have a little protection around me Yeah, and that, um, but but I think I think it's just seeing people too, mm-hmm. that you see them uh, as a as really the beautiful spirit that they really are or can become, yeah. and then you want to treat them that way, you know. Yep. So seeing people for people, and and even more so than the outward, what they want you to see. But that's kind of your gift, and that's something Reiki helps you see too, right? It's so much deeper than just the the surface identity. It's really getting into the root and into the subconscious and who we really are yes. and where it's, it's really cool. And if you guys have never yes. done Reiki, I suggest it. I only, it was a short one that I did with you. I, I know it's supposed to be like an hour plus, but it's really mm-hmm. fascinating to me. And I've lately gotten into this whole, people call it woo woo, right? Like into the whole world of meditation mm-hmm. and auras and all kinds of stuff. But it's like such a cool thing to be open to because you go through life with just this surface layer of uh, matter is matter and what I see is what is real and now it's like I've always had faith and I've always had you know religion and a relationship with God but this last year I've been like wow you're not at all who I thought you were <laughs> this is so great there's mm-hmm. so much more to this so yes. I think it's, it's cool that you can see that and that you're studying that out because there's so much truth and knowledge to be studied around us and I think that's something I love about you and why you carry that light because you've leaned into that and you're so open and it makes people feel safe and it makes people feel like they're accepted for no matter, you know, what flaws they may have or who they are. So that's a cool Mm -hmm. thing to continue to, that's a great legacy you're going to leave behind too, regardless of anything you do physically, you know, tangibly, you're leaving behind a great legacy as you are. Oh, well, and I, I appreciate that, and and I think everyone has that within them. Mm-hmm. And you know, my husband's very Mister Science based, and what was beautiful is that we'd watch these science documentaries, and it would just um, it just blows your mind that like in literally a drop of water, it's, oh. there's a whole universe going on, and so it's so magical, and and so when you you know, kind of it's like waking up to all mm-hmm. of that. It's so beautiful and you're so grateful to be alive and and I think that's a better it's a it's a healthy way to live yeah and it just feels better that way and I know that see we're basically energy and it's basically our body is inside the energy where we Mm -hmm. think it's just the opposite but we literally radiate from that and then we just have this physical body but we have layers that go way beyond our bodies that is all energy Mm -hmm. and and so um you know, when you know, if someone walks in the room, you can just you can you can feel that energy too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, isn't thing. that amazing? But I I appreciate that, and I um and that's why we all, you know, I feel like we can raise the energy, and mm-hmm. and then we we get to do that with our children, and then they're exposed to that, and there I just feel like there's just a another kind of a realm that we're going into. In yeah. like 2020, there's it's gonna it's becoming more and more beautiful. In yeah. you know, so that's right. Yeah, what is it? Julianne was telling us it's we've we've moved into the age of Aquarius a couple well, of years ago, right? 
But that is that right? What were we in before? And then it's shifted. And so there's and it's not even just about the feminine energy, but there really are shifts in the in the way things are around us. And we're going to we're sensing that because it is energy and we're responding to it and we're creating yes. accordingly. And we, I think when we just really realize that we really are the creator, we create our world. And, yes. you know, I think and yeah. so really for your children is to to really teach them that, you know, they really are the captain of their ship. They are, they create their world. Mm -hmm. They create, um, you know, it's like a binary choice. It can, we can have a good day or we can not have a not so good day today. What do you want to have? It's a choice mm -hmm. type thing, you know, and I yeah. think, and then it becomes a habit. And then there's that, there's that positive programming, you know, and that, um, mm -hmm. and stuff. So, you know, and that's the, you know, the um, seminar that I just came from, too, is just, you know, that we really do create our world. It's the, that law of attraction. And, um, but, you know, we, you know, we, it's like hills and valleys, you know, you get down and, and that's why I think I gravitate to learning all the time, because the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know anything. <laughs> I mean, there's so much yeah. out there. You know? like, I know. Oh. It's exciting. It's exciting and sad at the same time, right? Because you're like, oh, I just want to absorb mm -hmm. it like a sponge. But it's, it, there's just, and I told my husband this today. I'm like, I feel like I get things now at a level that I didn't get them before. Because four years ago, I started on this whole, like, that's when personal development opened its doors to me. And it was all theoretical, right? Mm -hmm. It was all just stuff in the books. And then I put it into practice and I was like, yeah, I've got this whole thing figured out. And then this year I've been like, I did not have this figured out, but now yeah. I'm really getting there. And I said, the funny thing is, I know there's even deeper, there's even deeper levels that I will get to. And I'm just continuing mm -hmm. the climb, right? Like I'm continuing to go down and figure stuff out as I go. But I, and I love too, that you said that you're into like the BBC science and one strange rock. And there is so much information out there now a days that we we have no excuse but to, you know, we have to learn about what's around us. And I, I hope more people become intoxicated with learning, regardless of what they're learning about. It's yes. so fulfilling it is. to learn. It is. And, and then, it, and then gra gratitude. You know, it gives you this, this sense of gratitude. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, like, um, I grew up Mormon and, um, and in mm -hmm. praying over our food and things. And then uh, now I'm just more open to um, just uh, spirituality, I guess you'd call it, and energy. And so mm -hmm. when my husband once, me once mentioned, he said, well, what about like, you know, you're eating lettuce, you know, and these vegetables, you know. And you get to a point mm -hmm. where scientifically it's like, yeah, they are energy. They're giving up their life. And so it became so sacred and reverent that, you want to pray. You want to give thanks. It's not yeah. just a rehearsed thing that, you know what I mean, that you say and it, um, you know, it's the same prayer, you know, over and over again. It's just, it really like becomes you. Yeah. Like you said, it's theoretical and now mm -hmm. it's becoming you and you just want to give thanks because something yes. just gave up its life for you to live. And, and that's, that's mm -hmm. precious, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it is. Well, and that's interesting you'd say that too, because I, you know, we always pray over the food and I lately have just felt this desire of like, we've got, and it's probably because I'm going deeper and so I'm wanting to take my kids mm -hmm. deeper. And so it just started as something a little bit light. Like I didn't say, okay, hey guys, now we're going to sit here and say what we're thankful for. I just said, and and they all laughed at first. They thought it sounded so silly. I was like, you guys, it's time to thank the Lord for the food that we have and the opportunity that we have to eat it. And they, instead of just saying, mm -hmm. say the prayer, I said it like that. And they were like, ah, that's funny. But then after we prayed and we were grateful for the food, I said, isn't it so great? We have a spoon and, and we're thankful for the dairy farmers. And my kids were coming up with the coolest things Aww. to be grateful for with every little piece of food on our plates and the way we were able to sit at the table and the light. And they started mm -hmm. noticing, you know, and it's Thanksgiving week. So what a better time. And I'm like, we're going to do this all the time. Like we are going yeah. to notice all of the pieces that are, are here for us, for mm -hmm. us just to be, for us to exist and enjoy. And it's, it is, it's different when you go beyond the rehearsed layer into the true gratitude. And I'm not just doing this because I'm supposed to, but I can't yes. not do this. Like I, it would just yeah. feel so wrong to uh -huh. not have gratitude yes. at a meal. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. Oh, well, but see, so cool. that, you're a beautiful mother. That's, that's a great thing. And that, you know, like I said, what a beautiful connection. What a beautiful thing to pass on to your children, you know, so. Yeah. And, and they remember. They'll remember I'm those trying. things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope so. I hope so. And that's why I love, I love talking to you because you're, you know, most of the people who are on here are still in the thick of it with the raising the young children. And I want to have more people who are kind of not on the other side, but who have finished this phase. And, you know, we want to hear from you. It's going to be okay. (laughs) It works out fine. And this is what, this is what you really need to worry about because we all know we're spinning our wheels, focusing on things that probably don't matter as much Mm -hmm. as we think they matter. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's good to have that perspective from you and to hear it all works out. <laughs> it, it does. And, and, and you know what? It just keeps changing too. And you just keep growing. Mm-hmm. And just like you said, you think you know, and then you realize, wow, I, I know in a deeper level now. But, and, yeah. and a lot of sometimes are, um, you know, just the things we go through, we, we, we understand more because we've gone through it. And so... Um, Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it will be all. It will be okay, even though the struggles sometimes are harder. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and um, there's just a. It gives you just a deeper sense of understanding. You know, of all the yeah. things you go through. So, but right. enjoy. I would say, but enjoy the journey, and then always ask. Well, what? What have? I, uh, thank you, universe. What can I learn from this? That's a good one. Yeah. Thank you, universe. Because sometimes some hard things will come into your life and you'll go, oh, that was a gift. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. thank you. So you see it differently because you change your thinking, your belief about it differently. Yeah. So that's this, that's 2019 for me was this, this could be considered a really bad thing that happened, but it is the thing I, I don't think I've ever been so grateful for anything in my life. And it's like a trial, but mm-hmm. I would not have, I would not be who I am right now. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't know you, like I wouldn't have met you mm-hmm. and I wouldn't have gone down that path. Mm-hmm. So there's so much to be grateful for, even in the the struggle. And that's such a valuable thing to teach our kids and something as I've been really struggling and learning how to overcome these things, I'm beginning to understand why. And it goes back to what we we're saying before, why I can't be a buffer all the time for my kids mm-hmm. because I want them to have all these opportunities, but I might be hindering the way for them to have them. Like they have to learn. Yes. And so even though I want to dump all this knowledge and wisdom into them now, I have to remember like as a 10 year old, as a seven year old, I wasn't ready for this information, no. but I can give them pieces. I can prepare them to absorb more and more and more. So mm-hmm. it's, oh, and it's, it's exciting to think I get to be their teacher, yes. <laughs> you know, their life coach forever. Yes. It's, I don't have to shove it all in, in one week. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Cause like, yeah, when they're. You can't teach a, a four-year-old to drive yet, you know, that type of thing. No. So it'll come when it comes, you know, <laughs> and then, yeah, it, it, yeah. It, yeah, all the challenges are just, are they're different and they just, you know, keep adding new dimensions mm-hmm. and stuff. So, yeah, you are, you're going to be great. You, you already are great and it's going to be oh, good. <laughs> and yeah. it's their life and it's their it's journey fun. too, like you said. You know, yeah. they're on their own little journey and we don't know really what they're, they need to learn. They'll, they, you know, mm-hmm. so there's things that they're, they're going to learn that, you know, so it's all going to be good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like there've been some really good takeaways here and I feel, I feel like without feeling guilt, I have some, I don't know, different perspectives on how to nurture kids at the stage that I'm in with them not being toddler, but them being starting to develop into people. Yes. And I knew you'd be able to bring that value because your kids have achieved and not just like the outward achievements of, you know, you have celebrity children, but beyond that, like they're very well adjusted and they, they know who they are and they have, they have passion for life. And so seeing that and understanding how you kind of created those opportunities is I think for me personally what I needed to hear, and I'm sure everybody listening is going to get something else out of this, but you've brought a lot of value basically is what I'm saying. And I love you for it. Oh, I love you. And I appreciate you saying that. And just the thought just came to me too, is that service. I I think that Mm -hmm. serving other people and um, is like, you know, is so important. And like what with you calling and doing this, the podcasts and, and asking questions is that you're you're serving and you're you're giving information to others and you're serving your children 
And even you serving them is also an example. And I noticed recently yeah. that my my husband, um, um, well, I just got some new sh uh, puppies. They're Shorkies. And uh, you'd mm -hmm. think after nine children, we're all free now, and now I get these two babies, you know. <laughs> it's like, great. <laughs> <laughs> and um but we bought we bought a little puppy for his brother and his brother's alone and he's uh, close to dialysis and he would he said that uh, Aaron's brother said that he used to make fun of people that were so close to animals and baby talk and, and everything and he just could not understand <laughs> and now he is he baby talks i mean he he bought a puppy cake for the puppy's birthday and <laughs> And he just adores his puppy. And I think, see, that serving that animal and then yeah. giving that get that animal, giving that love back. And so, you know, I think serving serving others, you know, and taking care mm -hmm. of animals, um, you know, you know, it just it brings like a richness that to life um, that, you know, don't normally may have had. He, he believes that. Mm -hmm. uh, my brother's, uh, my my husband's brother believes that he would have been a better husband and a father if he would have had an animal in his life. He's been more sensitive and learned how to take care of that animal, type thing wow. and connect, and um, and that's the same with my husband. As I take care of the animals, um, he has I've seen a side of him I've never seen before. He's so gentle and he's so sweet to them, and that and mm. so I guess I would say, you know. In, in you know, in our last part of our conversation, that serving others, and then I have a granddaughter that is going to the um, the senior citizens um, home and serving these older mm -hmm. people, and you know they think that she's this kind of um, teenager that um, you know you know those teenage years that are hard, and that you know she's mm -hmm. kind of um, I'm. Um, What's the word? Just um, she's trying to figure out herself, okay? And she's yeah. flustered and flustered at school and, and at home, but she absolutely loves going serving the older people. And I told Shari, I says, well, don't you worry. She's going to be great because she's, yeah. she's serving and she's got that connection. And so, and they're going to be going to go to other countries. Uh, one of the granddaughters came back from another country and at, in Thailand, and she's a, a, a service a, or a leader in helping the young women. Wow. And so, you know, there's always an opportunity to serve, too, no matter where yeah. we are. And so if you're, you know, like for your children, you know, you always, you know, look, be aware of maybe somewhere they can serve someone else or serve each other as a, yeah. as siblings or serve their, their dad or their mom, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, you know. I'll accept that. Yeah. <laughs> Go run the bath for me, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the bath salts. They actually yes. have done that for me before. They know. They know how valuable. I'm like, can I please pick your bath bomb? I'm like, oh, okay, oh, if you must. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it's the cutest. Yes. Oh, I love that. Thank you for adding that part because that is important. And that's something that I think needs to, if that became the core of everything that we did, everything would change mm -hmm. in society, in our homes, everything would change. So I think that's an important thing to, to have included. Uh, okay. So I ask everybody at the end of every interview, what makes you a marvelous mom? I think my marvelous children. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, you know I love that answer <laughs> because it's a reflection, right? Like your kids are a reflection of you, so I'll take it. I, guess I think it's I great. Be, I wouldn't be a mom without my children, so um, I'm just I'm mm -hmm. just grateful um, that I've had that the opportunity and that I and that I learn and I, I learn so much too. So from them, yeah. So um, oh, thank you, and I, I love that. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing everything you've shared. It's been so fun and I knew that it would be and I love getting to know you even more and that everybody else has an opportunity to get to know you a little bit through the podcast. I will link to your social media because I know everybody's going to want to follow you. You're so fun to follow everything as real as you've been here. That's how real you are on social media. So everybody go follow Marianne. Like I said, I'll link to it. But what is her name right now? We can just say if people are listening and they want to jump over to Instagram. Um, it's under uh, Marianne Huff, H-O-U-G-H. Okay. Yes. And well, Marianne is M-A-R-R. -R. 
I A N N. Yes, yes it's different. Some in there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh, it's unique. Great. Well, you are beautiful. You're beautiful inside and out, and I'm so grateful that you've been on here and. You're just, you're a wonderful soul. So thank you for sharing. You are. Thank you, Kirsten. I love you so much. I love you too. All right, everybody else listening, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good day. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you want to take action right now, you're feeling inspired and you're feeling enlightened and you really want to own this role as a marvelous mom, go to the website, marvelousmomsclub.com forward slash me and create your own personal marvelous moms manifesto. That is a tongue twister marvelousmomsclub.com forward slash me you go fill in some great information and in the end you'll have a beautiful manifesto to display where only you can see or the whole family can see where you can really really own your role as a marvelous mom and step inside those goals and those ambitions and dreams that you have to become an even more marvelous mom to your beautiful family so again marvelousmomsclub.com forward slash me we will see you over there